go. This is not like anything I've ever done. Lifetime, baby. Good morning, guys, from about 60 miles offshore of Dolphin Island, Alabama. We woke up this morning at about 5 a.m. and we ran out here with Captain Kurt. And as you can see, we got a big shrimp boat behind us. And today we are on the hunt for some big yellowfin tuna. So these guys shrimped all night and they just brought in their catch, and we're actually waiting to get some chum from them so that hopefully we can chum up some tunas. And I am very excited because Kurt just recently caught some of the biggest tunas he's ever caught out here. So wish us luck. Let's see what we can catch. All right guys, so we are in an area where there are a lot of boats fishing. I have never fished this area, so let's go ask Kurt why a bunch of people are fishing in this area. Well, it's like a, some natural bottom right here. It's like a, uh, it's like a hill. Uh, basically, there's a lot of bait here. Just like anything else when you're fishing, uh, all your big fish is gathered around just trying to eat the little fish. And one of the best known spots to catch the big tuna, and that's why all these boats are here. They generally show up this time of year, and when they do, we want to be here and be ready. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be chumming with that chum that we got from the shrimp boat and putting out some chunks and just letting those drift as well as we're going to be doing some jigging with some no lie bait needed lures like this and then possibly doing some popping later on as well. Come on tunas, eat oh, this. Oh, oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Come on Brickenstein! <laughs> that don't look like a shark. Hold on a brick! I don't know what it is. I dropped down and I only jigged a few times. And I'm on and Ryan's on. I don't know what I have though. Whatever it is, is big. <laughs> so when we came out here, it was like 40 degrees and we were all layered up in a ton of pelagic gear. So shout out to pelagic for hooking us up with a bunch of new stuff. Because we were cozy out there, I already had to take off one of my layers. But if you guys are interested in checking out some of their stuff, I'll have a link in the description. I see color. It looks like a jack. Holy Hannah. Giant Jack Crevel. Oh my god. Holy moly. Well, that's definitely the biggest jack I've ever caught. Look at that thing. One of the guys on the other boat, John, actually does a lot of shark fishing, so we're actually going to keep this for him. He saw us pull this fish up, and he got very excited over there, so we're going to save this for him. But that is, for sure, my biggest jack I've ever caught. We left that spot um, and we found, ran to another shrimp boat. And the amount of sharks that are hanging out by this boat is insane. Check it out, they are fired up. We're throwing in some of that chum. Oh my gosh. We're throwing in some of the chum that we got from the shrimp boat earlier and they are fired up. Biting the GoPro. Ryan has his GoPro in the water and they're literally biting the GoPro. I've never seen so many sharks just fired up like this before, it's crazy. We are now dropping jigs to the bottom to try to catch some bottom fish. Hopefully some grouper. Um, Ryan already caught a red snapper, which is out of season, so we had to let it go. But my first drop down, as soon as I hit bottom, got something. It's not very big, but we're about to see what it is. What on earth? I hooked, I hooked mine sideways. Look at that, that's why he fought so weird. I foul hooked them. Look at that. There we go. Little Amberjack, he's going back. No tunas to be found today. We're making do with what we can do. We're doing what we do. We're just fishing. All of 530 feet. This one is uh, gonna hurt. <laughs> Silently on in the back of the boat. Yeah. Should be another one. She's the strong, silent type. <laughs> Snapper. This is a red snapper. They are not in season right now. 
There's the jig. Little red snapper, he's going back. All right, go in, they're right here. See them all? Look at this one. There they are. That's them. That's what we want. So we moved around a little bit today. We did the jig fishing. We tried to go under the shrimp boats, but we are back to that same area where all those boats were, where we have that natural ground and a bunch of bait fish. And Ryan just caught a giant yellowfin. He fought that thing for about 45 minutes. So I'm a little bit scared, I must say. But he is literally back on the rod already. I would have thought he would have taken a break, but here he is again. Oh, so. We got another fish. So we're back to just dropping those no live bait needed jigs and just jigging. We just marked a ton of fish, fingers crossed. Victor and I hook up and we get ourselves a big elephant too. morning guys it is actually the next day and I may not look like it is the next day because I am wearing the same outside layers as yesterday but it is indeed the next day yesterday we fished for a little bit longer and we didn't have any luck so we ran back in and we are out here again it is a beautiful ocean back out here on the hunt for a big tuna we're about to drop down for the first time of the morning so wish us luck I really really hope that I catch a tuna today Ryan got that giant one yesterday so Wish me luck, fingers crossed. Let's go. All right, first one on again. Ryan's got one on. He says he's sore from yesterday's fish. Definitely sore from yesterday's fish. This fish is coming up a little easier. He's gonna hear me say that, freak out. But we're definitely gaining on him. This is the kind of one, kind of tuna I wanna catch. Holy moly, you kicked that thing's butt. Yeah, probably five minutes. <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, yeah. I swear deal. Ryan fought his fish yesterday that was almost like this exact same size for 45 minutes. Today's like five minutes. That's so crazy, the same difference of too. the same exact jig. It's a lucky jig head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Crazy. I'm on. Oh my gosh, Brick just got hit. Come on, Bricky. Jig, jig, jig. We're marking heavy, guys. We are marking. You can see the tuna. Ryan just caught one. There's one on the deck. It's like the most frustrating thing, thinking, what am I doing wrong? Woo! Come on. These tuna are staying real deep. They're all like 150 to 125 feet underneath the boat. The line just started shooting off the freaking pool. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> okay. No, he's there, he's there. Thank you. Oh, baby. Heck yeah. I've been waiting for that sound for two days. Oh yeah. Okay. Now the fight begins. I'm hoping for a one like Ryan's this morning, a nice short fight, unlike his yesterday. <laughs> On the drop. <laughs> Woo, baby. If you guys could only feel my heartbeat right now. 
Oh my god, that was so scary. That was weird. Come on, Brookie, you got this. Come on, Brooke, sir. Oh no. What? It didn't pull, did it? No, you're good. It's swimming at you real fast, real, real fast. Swimming right at you. Stupid weird stuff. Oh my god, Brooke. Come on, Brooke. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah, take off some layers. You want to grab this just for one second? Careful. Teamwork, baby, teamwork. Teamwork is dreamwork. It's too hot. Gotta take off some layers. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm like shaking like no one's business. Okay, she's all ready. She's got her hair shaked, everything. <laughs> pull, pull your pants up. Put your big girl pants <laughs> on. <laughs> big girl pants are on, baby. All right, here we go. She's fixing to catch her personal best she's used to doing on here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This will definitely be my biggest tuna, that's for sure. Last year, fishing with Kurt, I caught a giant yellow edge grouper. First time I ever caught one and the thing was giant. So Kurt puts you on the fish. Well, I definitely didn't get an easy one like Ryan. <laughs> Update. She's a leg up on him. You still got the big fish. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke is definitely on a monster tuna right yeah, now. This just I'm finding Jesus on the front of the boat. <laughs> you uh, think you might be in shape? Come out here and try to catch a tuna on a spinner. Then you really know what kind of shape you're in. Brooke, what compares to this fish? Honestly, nothing. <laughs> um, the biggest fish I've ever caught was a marlin in St. Lucia when Victor and I actually got engaged. And it was like, we estimated like a 500 pound marlin, but that was sitting down, broad butt, in the fighting chair. Very different from fighting something on a spinner. That's what I like. Come on, baby. Come on up. We don't want that digging deep. It's not a good angle to fight a fish when they're straight up and down. Come look at this screen. See all these, that's all tuna right there. They're following us. Hey Zach, you on this one? I'm going under the boat. Y'all hit on your side? Let us know if you just need help keeping the rod on. Let's do it, watch that boat. Let's finish right now. Y'all watch a lot. Someone want to take a turn? So does someone want to take a turn? You're good. <laughs> Nothing easy about this. I'm already in pain 30 seconds into holding the rod. My rule in the game is just don't break them all. There's nothing out here for him to break us all for. We just want to get him in. The straight up and down, this is just the not fun at all. This is the work that breaks you. Look at this, I hand him in the rod and he puts his hand all over the pool. <laughs> Look it up. Somebody's gotta do it. Hang on tight, little baby. <laughs> we got a monster on, guys. Magnum, true Magnum. Brooke might have the big fish. It looks like it. He's solid. He's at the right angle and now he's still pulling drag. When they're out like this, that's when you can gain line typically, but this fish is like, nah, man, I'm gonna pull some drag while I'm out there. It's like I wanna take it back. Oh, take it back right now. It just got fished off. Look at that thing go. 
Any line that I've gained back for broke is now gone. <laughs> This is another one of the main ones from yesterday. It yeah. must have been his brother or something. You know, it'd be nice to not have to pass it off, but man. It's not worth literally killing yourself. This is unlike anything I've ever fought. And it's going to be rewarding when this thing makes it to the boat. That's for sure. Uh. You want to schedule the chiropractor appointment now? Yeah, call him right now. Make my appointment for tomorrow. Mr. London, I'm coming to see you. <laughs> Thank you ah! Ah! <laughs> Learning the ways of the knee on the gunnel. This is, a, this is a patented technique right here. I, uh, I taught Brooke this technique. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Actually, my time, or when I was fighting my first big tuna ever last year on Kurt's boat, it's exactly what I ended up doing. Because you, you just get so tired being pulled this way. It's like, I don't know if you guys, this is a weird analogy. Spend a lot of time doing dishes over the sink and your back's like at this position. Now imagine you're in this position stuck but there's also a 200 pound fish pulling you in this direction the whole time. Doing that for 30 minutes, anyone, give, give an ev anyone back pain. Ryan just wants to brag about the fact that he does dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's like you can't even gain anything. Every single time you get one crank, it wants to take just as much. All right, baby, come on, let's do some stuff here. Yeah, let's do it, too. Let's do some stuff here, baby, come on. That's what I want to see, come on up. Come on up. I'm tired, you must be tired. Let's go. Hold on, Kurt, hold on, hold on. There he is, there he is, there he is, oh! Woo! We got collar, baby. He's straight out front to the right slightly. One o'clock. Oh yeah, baby. We saw color. We're getting close. Starting to go under the boat, Kurt. They're doing great. Going? Am I helping you? Yeah. You can let go. Ryan's got a fish on the deck. Brooke's got a big elephant on, and she has been crushing it. Fighting elephants is probably like the toughest thing you could possibly do on a spinning reel, and she is absolutely owning this fish. Come on. Don't do it! Don't! <laughs> no! Did you ever loosen your drag on this fish? Hey, Jeremy! He's coming right to you! It's a little chaotic. There's a boat right there, and our fish is going right into them. Oh, God. Vic, you may need a help. I got you. You want me to grab the rod? Well, if he starts to go under the boat and I can't help but keep it off of the bow. God, my leg is cramping up. This is an angry, angry fish, man. See him come up top for one second. And he looked around and said, nope. <laughs> and my forearm cramping. No, no, no! What do you want, babe? What do you want? Nothing. I want this fish in the boat. I'm just relaxing. You're doing all the heavy lifting for us today. Ah! 
Hey, Brooke, you're earning this one. There's no cheating. Earning every bit of it. I've seen Ryan catch a couple big tuna now. And yesterday, he earned his fish. Today, Brookie is earning this fish. This fish could be smaller than the ones we caught today, but every single fish has a little bit of a different personality. Some fish are just mean, man. You have 250 pound fish and one is completely different than the other. And this fish has some mean streak in them. It has given Brook everything it's got. I'll tell you what, yesterday Ryan caught his fish and went right back to fishing. And I'm like, you're crazy. After fighting this fish, I think I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna deserve a nap. <laughs> <laughs> He's going under the boat, Kurt. You need a break? No. Yep. I ain't kidding. It ain't easy. That's for sure. Someone just, someone just said they have a stubborn one on. I got a stubborn one on. I don't know what changes it, if it's the way they're hooked. Some fight harder than others, but this guy's pissed. He ain't making it easy for me, that's for freaking sure. get so excited you're like this is it and then bam he takes it right back <sighs> find every position possible <laughs> to ease up on your back a little bit let's go pumping on them what did the great ronnie coleman once say everybody wants to be a tuna fisherman but no one wants to fight no damn tuna <laughs> scale of 1 to 10 how bad you think my back hurts. 1 being not so bad, 10 being the worst. <laughs> I need to switch positions. I need help for one second. Got it. Ready? You're, oh. you're good. You're good. Starting to like shake. Yeah, no, you're good. It's literally all part of the game. Shake that lactic acid, lactic acid out of the arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. We bought one one night that was 209 pounds for four and a half hours. Holy crap. pound test line. And it just stayed down at a hundred and something foot like this, right out here. When you're in this, normal people call it the pain cave. In the Marine Corps, we used to call it, you're in the black. Like you just can't pay attention to anything else going around. You know, it's just like tunnel vision and pain and you're just suffering. <laughs> We're back in the saddle. Tuna's on the menu tonight. Back in the saddle again. I'm back. <laughs> At this point of the fight, it's like the most dangerous because you're like tired and you're not as agile. Like if a fish does something crazy and you need to maneuver the rod, your arms and your back are just toast and it's gonna be much harder to do. But when you're fresh, you know, or fighting something smaller, you can maneuver quick, but you know, you never know when a fish is gonna make some crazy run to the front of the boat. And bam, the line hits the gunnel and you're done. Come up, you loser. Come up, you nice boy. I'm ready for a margarita. Hello, is it for Brooke? Hello? Oh, hang on, she's on the other line. Waiting <laughs> 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 all day to do that one. <laughs> Whew, man, guys. Oh, there you go. This is unlike anything I've ever done. There you go, you're gaining, you're gaining. Come on, keep them coming this way. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh. We got a two gone! All right, Brookie's still hooked up on her fish. I took this rod from Ryan because I have not caught one yet. That's your situation, guys. 
<laughs> Keep yours over there. Huh? Keep yours over there. All right, I'll do that, babe. Keep yours about 200 feet down. I'll keep mine up here. Come on, baby. Come on. Get your ass in the freaking boat. <laughs> I'm tired of your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> How dirty to him. <laughs> a lot can go wrong right now. But we're going to do our best to get both these fish in. Got a double hook up. Our line looking kind of tight. Tightly close. All right, Bert, All right we're going to go. Way. We're going to switch sides. Bert, Bert, come in just back a this way. Go. Yep. Over and under. I'm under you. Right? Ready? Just like that. Ready? Yeah. I want to go back that way. At this point, you could cut the tension in the air with a plastic butter knife. My heart sank at this point. The lines got tangled, and all I could think was, this is it. I'm going to lose my fish of a lifetime. The other way, the other way, the other way. The other way. Ryan, under. Under Ryan? I don't think that's right. Is it? You got it? Okay. No, not right. There's one more, isn't it, Kurt? There's three more. Loose that drag. Go through, through the bottom. Come on, three times. All right. There we go. That's it. That's it. Oh, God. All right. So what we just good did. Good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. We all loosened. We, Brick and I both loosened up our reels. We got tangled. We got two fish on trying to get, I guess, near each other. And um, that could be really bad. If you don't loosen that drag and you have two tight lines with tunas going opposite ways, you could go zing pow real fast. Brooke, talk to me about what just happened. Well, um, Victor has a tuna on now too. So we're both hooked up which is exciting, you know, to have two fish on at one time. But at the same time, you gotta be really careful to not get these lines tangled. And that is exactly what happened. And they were wrapped oh. around each other three times. You just broke him off. Oh, Victor just lost his. Come on, Brooksy. Kick his ass. Going back behind the boat. I got it, I got it. Stay with you. Okay, it'll be easy to gain it back. Kind of shooting to the left a little bit. Sounds like a shark has I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm like, there he is. He's right there. Come on, baby. Ready, Ryan? Yeah, I'm ready. He wants to go under Kurt. Yeah, he's going under. Doing a little spin. I got it. He's, Don't just let go. Don't just let go. He's going towards the bow. Going towards the bow. The bow. The bow. Put your rod on. Don't it. just let go. Yeah. Put it in there. There you go. Don't just let go. I'm please. not. Right now. Not no. Yet. Now. Now he's starting to scope. Well, no. Still he's under still the boat. Still under the boat. Hurt, hurt. Way under. He's under. Going towards the motors now. Way under. Come on, man. Come out, baby. Yeah, come back up. The boat is silent in anticipation right now. This is the second time we've seen him. He's not as excited to see us as we are to see him. What it is, that you probably swallowed that thing. Take a break. You're going to kill yourself. I already killed myself. All I know is I can't wait to eat some sushi. <laughs> you ever seen this one, Ryan? Under the hamstring? Under the hamstring is a new one. I don't have the flexibility for that technique. It's very advanced. <laughs> Typically, only true masters can achieve this, so maybe you've elevated your game. <laughs> it's 
it's a nice leverage point, I'm not gonna lie. There he is, there he is, he's right here. Brian, get ready. Oh, come on, baby, come on, come on, on baby. There he is. No, 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 no. Which way, which way? Under. He's spinning he's under spinning. towards the motor, head is towards the motor. Ryan, Kurt. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. All right, you just switch directions, Kurt, to the left now. Where's that? Right under the boat. Is that one of the yep. Yes. Yeah. Towards the motor. Just when you thought the party was over. You can dance if you want to. <laughs> but if your friends don't dance, if they don't dance, they ain't no friends of mine. <laughs> Put in reverse, Terry! Someone go down there and spear him. Spear him with a spear gun. My back's done. I need a spear gun. I need help. I need help. I need help. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Look at this. That's freaking insane. I need you to grab this back. Got it. Move the gas. We just lost a lot of line. It's okay. So we got the fish on. Definitely been fighting it for over an hour. I don't exactly know how long. Got them so close to the boat. The boys had the gas in their hands and then made another run. I was like, Victor, grab the rod, grab the rod. <sighs> crazy. <laughs> really crazy. This fish is a demon. I don't think my forearm will ever be the same. <laughs> You're gonna have Popeye forms after today. Hurts. He's just the biggest pain in my ass I've ever had. <laughs> Bigger pain in the ass than me? Yeah, which is really exciting or something. <laughs> <laughs> you boys ready? Yep. He's gonna go under the boat. He's under the boat. He's under the boat. He's on he's going to the bow, Kurt. Bow, bow, bow. This fish is smart. Now he's going towards the back. The back. All right, he's uh, off the side now. Okay. Man, this is a, a group effort, I will say. Going back towards under the boat. <laughs> he's out. Big sickles on them. This is it. Where's your gaff? Got it right here. Alright, you should make a big loop. You got it. You're almost there. You did amazing. What do y'all need to be on either side of? Uh, here he comes, here he comes. What a fish, y'all. I'm gonna stare for you. Look at that sickle, baby! <laughs> this is it. One, One more. Time. One more. One more time. Dude, this yeah. fish is yeah, still good. pumping. Ready? One, two.
and didn't want to die. Did not want to quit <sighs> at all. It's freaking crazy and exhausted. Well deserved. <sighs> That's insane. <laughs> this fish still does not want to give up. That thing's lit up. Look at those gorgeous colors on that thing. Can you both just deadlift it up? <laughs> you see these quads? Come on, boys! Come on, fellas! Scoot back. Yeah. Alright guys, check it out. My biggest freaking yellowfin ever. Kurt, how big do you think it is? It's a magnum. Very big. I could not have done this without these boys, man. I could not have caught this fish without them helping me. That was absolutely insane. My body is so tired. I couldn't have imagined them not helping me. So thank you so much, guys. And Kurt driving the boat, putting us on the fish. Dennis doing a great job behind the camera. I can't wait to watch the footage. This is just an absolutely epic moment. Epic fish with a great crew. And we're not even done. We had a great day yesterday. Ryan already put a fish in the boat. Just insane. I've never got to fish like this before, so this is incredible. And I just feel really lucky to be here. And this is the fish of a lifetime, baby. Heck yeah. Would you recommend it to the faint of heart? Oh yeah. You gotta give it a try. <laughs> oh, yeah. You gotta get a couple fishes. on cloud nine after catching that fish and I want to give a huge shout out to Saltwater Sportsman for making this trip happen. They have made this trip happen as well as we were here exactly one year ago fishing with Kurt also on a Saltwater Sportsman adventure and last year I was actually on the cover of the magazine after our trip to Tropic Star Lodge with Saltwater Sportsman so huge shout out to them. If you guys want to check out their magazine I will have all the information down below so you guys can subscribe and they're also going to be doing a giveaway this year for a 30 foot soulless boat so make sure you check that out and get entered to win that boat you don't want to miss out on that there's going to be a big story from this exact trip and the june july issue dennis has taken a bunch of photos that are all going to be in there and hopefully you'll see a picture of me with my tuna so if you guys are interested in checking out the saltwater sportsman magazines you can either click this qr code to subscribe or i will have a link down in the description now let's see what else we can catch i'm i'm waiting for you well that is the end of our trip we are just packing everything up and we are going to head home to unload our fish it was a pretty epic trip with some awesome fish I can't wait to have sushi for dinner. <laughs> Brookie caught the fish of a lifetime. I am so beyond proud of her. I think there's very few guys who could have reeled on that fish and you freaking, you did some work. That was the toughest fighting fish I've ever encountered in my lifetime. That was definitely crazy. It definitely gave me the run for my money, but I glad had, to get it in the boat. It was I, like the most rewarding thing to get that fish in the boat. And when those two lines were tangled, my heart just like dropped. I was like, this is it. I'm gonna lose this fish. The opportunity of a fish of a lifetime, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> and then finally they got them untangled and everything worked out. But man, all those runs that it took, just so intense, you know, and uh, just really glad to get that fish in the boat. I asked her if she's gonna do this once a year. She goes, Vic, I'm ready to go back next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need uh, at least a week for my uh, arms to, uh, not be sore anymore because I am definitely feeling it. All right guys, so we're going to weigh my fish, but we did actually already gut the fish before we found out we were gonna get a scale. So the fish is gutted. But comment down below how much you think it weighs. Is it zero? What? Is that right? 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really? that's those yeah. nuts are going to be 15 pounds. Wow. 133. And that's gutted. with it gutted. So. Ryan, Brooks' fish is bigger than yours. No. <laughs> I don't know how much do you think the guts were. Ten pounds, maybe ten. Ten. Yeah. Ten. Ten. Twelve ten. pounds. It's gonna range ten to fifteen. Man. It's a hundred and fifty pound fish. Yeah. Wow, it's so like a hundred and fifty pounds. That's incredible. Heck yeah! Thank you so much. And thank you for bringing the scale. I'm glad, <laughs> I, I'm glad I got to actually see the number versus just estimating. So that was pretty cool. Heck yeah, baby. You and the hundred fifty pound club. Next up, two hundred pounds. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, an easier one to catch. <laughs> Listen up, y'all, because this is it. This tuna that I'm flying is delicious. Is All that right. how we're starting it? All right, guys, so it is actually the next day, and what we did last night was we gutted these tunas, and a couple of them we had to take the head and the tail off to get them to fit in the coolers because we didn't have time to flay them last night, so we just left them filled with a bunch of ice and coolers last night. Um, Victor's knocking off the loin over there, and Ryan already has a loin over here that he is skinning, and skinning in these big chunks like this. Yeah. And what I'm doing is I am drying off these big chunks of tuna, because you never want to wash off your tuna with um, fresh water. So all I'm doing is just taking some paper towels, drying it off, getting any blood or scales off, just to help keep our meat as nice as possible. But check out this giant, beautiful piece of tuna that would be perfect for some tuna steaks. And then we're just gonna have a ton of Ziploc bags to bring home. We're gonna have a bunch of fish to give away to our friends, family, neighbors, everybody gets to have some tuna. We're gonna be everyone's favorites. And for at least a week. Yeah, for at least a week. And they'll be like, what have you done for me lately? Also, just kind of knocking off like these little bits of bloodline. Like, obviously, we're not getting these things table ready right here because there's just a lot of work to do and we still have 12 hours of driving today. But getting these things pretty serviceable and making sure there's no scales or anything that's really going to taint the meat um, before we bag it up and get it back on ice. This is the most satisfying part of the tuna. When you're coming down this loin right here and you're separating the bloodline and that knife just goes shoo. Just like that. <sighs> That's the perfect sound, Vic. You better leave that in the video. That was oh, the I'm leaving it in there. That's the perfect sound to describe that feeling, man. We want to see your beautiful loin, Vic. Look at this. What's better than one tuna loin? Two giant yellowfin tuna loins. Look at that. That is a hunk of meat. All right, Brooke, you set it off. All right guys, so we're gonna finish filleting up all these tunas. Like Ryan said, we have a 12 hour drive back home. So I will see you guys back in the kitchen, back at home. Welcome back to the kitchen. Unfortunately, I got very, very sick after that trip. Victor was sick on the trip. And then on the way home, I ended up getting very sick. I was fighting a horrible fever for that 12 hour drive. And I've just been sick all week long, so. It's been an entire week and I have only had tuna last night for the first time, but we gave away so much tuna. All of our friends, our family, our entire street of neighbors, everyone got tuna and it was really cool because we were able to give everyone a bunch, like a giant quantity of tuna so then they were able to share it with their families. So this fish has been shared with so many people. So many friends have been sending us pictures of how they've been cooking it, and I've been so jealous, everyone's saying how great it is, but I haven't even been able to taste all week, so I have been really going through it. So I, typically you guys would see me cook for my whole family, but haven't been able to do that because I don't think I wanna be around anyone right now. But tonight, I decided I'm going to be making tuna nachos. That's what I'm craving. So that's what I'm making. So I chopped up my tuna into little pieces and for my nachos, what I'm doing is I'm gonna take these wonton wraps and uh, this is some sesame oil here. And I'm just gonna put some sesame oil on these. And I'm gonna bake them in the oven at 375 for just a few minutes. You can fry these wonton wraps, but 
baking them, they turn out well. And it's obviously much healthier to bake them versus to fry them. What's the best part about a chip? The salt. So I'm just gonna hit them with a little bit of salt. And now the oven is preheated, so these are going in the oven. And we'll keep an eye on them, but I'm thinking only about six, seven minutes. So I also made some homemade eel sauce, which is equal parts soy sauce, mirin, and sugar. And what I did was put it on the heat for about 45 minutes. Um, I let it boil one time and then turned it down and just let it simmer. Oh yeah. And it's gonna thicken up as it sits. Here's our finished chips. Um, I ended up leaving them in the oven for 10 minutes. And now we're going to put some soy sauce on our tuna, as well as a little bit of sesame oil. And the main thing that everyone has been saying about this tuna is that it is very, has a very, very high fat content. And when we were filleting this fish, you could feel it on your hands, all the oil that it had, which fat is what gives it the flavor. So everyone has been saying this is like the best yellowfin they've ever had. Um, a little bit of sriracha. I am not a big spicy person, so I'm not gonna do a lot, which you could obviously add as much as you want. Some black sesame seeds as well as some white sesame seeds. Can you taste yet? Can't taste anything, huh? I can a little bit. So sad. Yeah. I've literally been the saddest person all week long. I've been telling Vic that I am the saddest person in the world right now. That's what I feel. I just feel really sad. And my brain just like hasn't even been working. It's just been a very sad week. Okay, let's start to make our nachos. The worst part about getting nachos out at a restaurant is they like never give you any tuna. So that's the fun part about making it at home. Same thing with sushi. I feel like a lot of times they don't put a lot of sushi in your rolls, but when you're at home, you can go as big as you wanna go. This avocado is so ripe. Some fresh scallion. If you wanted to put on some spicy mayo, that would be delicious on top, but I didn't feel like making any, but we are going to put our eel sauce as our last little step. Here we go, and for the fun part. Okay, did I forget anything? Nope. Probably, I just can't remember. You could also add more sriracha on top if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. If Victor wants to, he can add some more, but. It is very beautiful, just like you. Wow, well, thank you. Okay, here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Today's like the first day when I can actually taste a little bit. Like I can definitely taste the eel sauce and the difference of the chip and stuff. What about the tuna itself? Do you notice that it's way, um, just more tender and flavorful and fatty than normal or no? I'm not gonna lie. No? I wish I said it, I wish I could say I can, you know, but. You know, we've eaten a lot of tuna, but this tuna, man, the tuna they make over there in the Gulf, that Kurt catches are just on another level. Those cold water tuna, mmm. This is a fun way to eat tuna though. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves chips, everyone loves nachos. Tuna nachos, baby. And it makes your, look at this. You'd never get that in a restaurant. That's more tuna on my one chip than you get in your entire meal. Well, Victor and I are going to finish up our nachos. I wanna give a big thank you to Captain Kurt for making this happen. 
Um, he is an amazing captain. If you guys want to check him out, I'll have his information linked down below. As well as another big thank you to Saltwater Sportsman. Again, if you're interested in checking out the magazine, you can either click on the QR code or I will have a link in the video description as well. And thank you for Victor for taking care of me for the last <laughs> week. Um, I wished that I could taste this more, but I'm glad that all of our friends and family and a bunch of people got to enjoy this fish. It definitely did not go to waste. Nope. Um, it's amazing how many people we got to share it with. It was really, really special. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys for watching this video. It was a very long one, so I appreciate you watching. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.